Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jason, and here we are again with another Radar Omega tutorial video. Um, this is part two, and we took a um, we took some suggestions from comments, and that is the next video we're going to be talking about. It's going to be model data. Now, this is only available for Alpha subscribers. So if you're not an Alpha subscriber, this is a good opportunity to see what is available. And so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to click on this hamburger icon, which you've already seen me do, but that's where we're going to click. And then let's clear that. Boom. And then click on this little blue menu right here, single site or radar. Go down to models and just click it. <clears throat> we have three different options, or three different little sub-menus here. We have convection allowing models, or regional models, and we have global models. Now, if you're not familiar with model data, um, all of this model data comes from primarily two sources. You have the Euro, the ECMWF, and then everything else pretty much comes from NSEP, the National Center for Environmental Prediction, which is an agency of the U.S. government. Uh, those different options here, the GFS RAP, NAM 12 kilometer, and then the convection allowing PER and NAM 3 kilometer are all uh, from NSEP, and then of course the ECMWF. So anyway, the first one that we'll just go ahead and click on is the HER, and as you can tell, we have a slightly different interface now. We no longer have the um, thing that was down here before. Um, but we do have some new stuff. We have this little green menu here. We have a 3D option right here. We have the date. This is the date of the model run. We have the time of the model run, <clears throat> and then we have when that particular model is valid in the current time zone. So right now, this is valid for today at 9 a.m., which is three minutes from now. And then, of course, we have the different run. So this is the hour. Right now, we're at zero one. And if you click on, let's start back over here at the left. Notice you can pick from any of the models without having to go all the way back to the hamburger menu, which is great. You can just quickly select it from here. Right now we're going to stick with the her and just kind of give a quick overview of that. Uh, you can pick between 3D and 2D. I don't really use that, but uh, you're more than welcome to try it out. We can take a quick look at it whenever we get some stuff in here. And then the her only, they only go back a couple days. I don't keep a lot of history. Then you have these different runs. Now the her runs hourly. Uh, so that's why you see so many here. If we look at some of the other ones, you won't see as many hours because those don't run as often because they take a lot longer to run. Uh, and then of course you have the valid. And then if you click this, the you have all the way up to 18 hours. Now with the HER, and this is true whether you're using Radar Omega or whether you're using something like Pivotal Weather or whatever, um, the primary uh, model runs uh, run six hours apart. Uh, so if you use those, which is what I typically use uh, up until the day of, you get 48 hours worth of uh, of uh, model data instead of just 18. Um, that's pretty useful if you want to go pretty far out. Although the further out you get, the less accurate it's going to be, of course, which is true of all model data. So let's go ahead and see what else do we have here. Well, 
let's get our pen out. Down here at the bottom right corner, we have our product selector. Now this is pretty much the same as it is for the radar, except we have different products available. We have, and it's different for different models, but they're pretty much all, well, I guess they're, some of these have different options that won't be available in other models. So you'll have to, we'll go through some of them, I guess, but you have to pick and choose what you want to use here. Um, right now we'll just use dew point because that sounds like it's going to be fun. And uh, we'll zoom out because, well, we want to see the whole thing here. And this is one of the great things about Radar Omega as opposed to something like Pivotal Weather because you can zoom out and you can zoom in really, really far. Whereas with, say, uh, Pivotal Weather or something, or a web-based, you usually can't zoom in like that. And you usually have to kind of like pick different preset views uh, we don't have to deal with that here, which is nice. So let's go ahead and play this. You can play it just like you can with radar data. You get the little blue progress bar up at the top there. We'll let that download. And then you notice it doesn't take that long. And then you can just let it play. And you can see how the dew points really dry out here. And then, boom, a huge surge of moisture at the end. And let's go ahead and stop this. And just like with radar data, you have the little bar that you can move if you press and hold on the play button. And now this is going to be the same on iOS and Android, except for instead of a mouse, you're just going to use your finger. But um, that's that. And then there's different. We'll look at some of the other products. Let's actually go over here where there's actually some activity. And let's pick composite reflectivity real quick so you can see what that looks like. And we'll go ahead and just play it. Now, with model data, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, so, for example, let's come over here. You have these little showers or storms or whatever. In this general area here in... Uh, so Mississippi, yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a storm, for example, right here. It might not be there at all. It might be over here. It might be over here. It might end up being here. But you just you, you use this model data as kind of a guide as to what the storm mode's going to be, kind of generally the general area where you might see some sort of activity. So really you look in this entire vicinity here. And then of course you're going to look at other factors as well to try to determine where this might occur or whether it will occur at all. Because I've seen the her get it really close um, and I've seen it get it completely wrong. And same with other models as well. So that's that. And then you can just kind of pick, let's go all the way out to 48 hours. That's Saturday at 7 o'clock in the morning. It looks like there's going to possibly be some rain over Cincinnati and Columbus and over western PA and eastern Ohio. But anyway, this isn't a forecast video. This is a how to use the uh, forecast models and then of course we could just pick different ones let's pick the GFS real quick and I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna pick upper air and this is just gonna be a quick 500 millibar chart and let's zoom out because like I said the grid spacing here is a lot different than the her and let's go ahead and play it but I'm going to press and hold there, or click and hold, and we're just going to wait for it to finish downloading. And you can watch these little troughs come and go. And we're actually watching some for next week, which uh, by the time you guys see this, it'll probably be next week. Um, 
you can see there's a huge trough that's forecasted to come through. Um, and that's going to bring us some severe weather across the plains and Mississippi Valley there. And then it ejects, and then we have another one coming through. So you can kind of see how this functions. It's pretty, it's pretty nifty. You can really kind of get into the weeds here if you want. Let's go look at one more, one more thing here. Let's see what the uh, current 06Z shows, just because I'm curious for next week. You wouldn't typically use EHI or Energy Helicity Index for forecasting, especially on the GFS, uh, and especially not this far out. But I like to use it as a kind of a guide as to where the super weather might occur. And it looks like we've got some overlap of, oh my gosh, that was really large. That's hilarious. Let's switch this back. And clear this. I'm not sure how that occurred. Right in this vicinity, particularly right here. Now that's going to change, of course, by the time we get to Monday or Sunday or whatever, because this is going to be this is actually Sunday. It's been jumping around quite a bit, so. It's not quite got a grip on exactly where the stuff's going to be. And I wouldn't really use this for that anyway. I would use the HER or the NAM at that point. Because those will be in range by, by, by Saturday and Sunday. For Sunday and Monday. But you can kind of get a general idea. we have got some really big numbers up here. But you really have to pay attention to more than just EHI. Moisture. You gotta, There's a lot of different factors that go into this. You can't just look at one map one model and one run. You gotta look at multiple maps, multiple runs, and you gotta look at all the different factors that play into it. Um, now right now, as of April the 7th, 2022, Radar Omega does not have uh, sounding data. Uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna bring it in or not. I've heard rumors that they might, but I don't know for sure. So that's... Uh, that would be really cool if they are able to implement that. Then you'd be able to, say, click on it and get a sounding. That would be really cool. Um, but everything else pretty much is the same. You get the maps with it, so you can really kind of get an idea of what roads, although I wouldn't really trust this uh, with the maps. You just want the general overview with something like the GFS. Let's uh, take a quick look at the NAM 3 kilometer. Actually, no. Let's look at the 12-kilometer NAM. Then we'll do, I guess we'll do EHI. But let's see what it looks like. Just as a, uh, and I don't notice this only goes out to 84 hours. And we don't have 84 hours. This is something else. This is good to, to see. So we're at the 12Z run, and it says image 84 is not ready. So these are only ready up to 32. As time goes on, you'll see these fill out all the way, uh, and then you'll have them. If you want to get all of them, see, notice this is at 73%. We'd have to go back to 06Z to get all of them. Now we have everything, so we can go and view that one. Of course, with each run, it's going to add hours to it. So uh, that hour 78, for example, or, or let's just go to 84, at hour 84, on the 06Z, it's at Sunday at 1 p.m. If we switch to the 12Z, it won't be Sunday at 1 p.m. anymore. It'll be three hours later. Um, so it'll be 4 o'clock once the 12Z finishes. So hour 84 will be 4 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock. And that will continue for each su subsequent run. Actually, it might even be more than more than that because there's six hours difference here so i don't remember what it is but anyway there'll be hours added so might be six hours instead of three but in any case that's the model data and you can kind of go through and look at each of the different ones uh let's look at 3d real quick let's see if we can 
see what that looks like. Let's go back over here where we actually have composite reflectivity. Oh, look, there's a little tornado warning down here. Let's go take a look at this. You can see the forecast for 9 a.m. from the HER actually is not that far off. We see this is an actual tornado warning right here, and this is an actual severe thunderstorm warning, and then you have these special weather statements. But uh, the HER was forecasting for 9 a.m. storms all throughout central Florida here. Actually, north central Florida. And it seems to be pretty accurate. Notice that we have the tornado warning here. These are a little further back, but of course it's 10 after 9 o'clock already. So if we were to go forward to 2, so now this is 10 a.m. So that's pretty accurate. Uh, it's not always going to be that way. Right, you can see this giant storm here. This is probably the one that's forecasted that's right here. Let's get the pen out. So this, ooh, that's not going to work. Let's do pink. This storm is probably forecasted. This is probably the storm right here, whatever storm this is that's producing this tornado warning. So you can see that the herder did a pretty good job. Um, Course, that's not always the case and this is also the early morning run so that's as close to that as you can get so that did a pretty pretty good job um kind of gives you an idea of what the weather would have been like anyways um let's see if there's anything else with model data you can do all the other stuff that you can do in radar data you can do your location you can of course draw on the map these are all the basic controls we went over in the previous video. And that's pretty much what you get with model data. It's very useful. I love having it, and I love being able to zoom in on the maps. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, maybe in a future video, we'll actually go over forecasting, but I'm not a meteorologist, so you'll have to take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, in that particular realm. Anyway, thanks for joining me. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. If you haven't already, go ahead and like or dislike the video, whichever one you prefer. Of course, YouTube is disabled the like button or dislike button. Um, and if you feel so inclined, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos, particularly in this series, but also our storm chasing videos, which hopefully we'll have some more in the next week or two. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good day.